struggling, I'm going to let them know I'm struggling and talk to them about how it is okay to not feel 100% straight up here. Right. How it's, it's not always going to be a great 100% A-plus day, man. The, 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 it, rains more than it, it, it rains more than the sun shines when you're really trying to be great. And if you can accept that as a kid, man. In this episode of The Pursuit of Greatness, I talk with the one and only Patrick Coyne. We literally jump right into uh, the conversation without an introduction, man. He talks about his journey of uh, chasing money, chasing status for years instead of his passion. And this left an empty feeling inside for so many years. Now he's back chasing his passion. He's now the founder and owner of Black Sheep Performance where he's a sports performance and QB coach. And as he tells his athletes, nobody cares, work harder. Let's get into this episode with the one and only Patrick Cohen. I'll talk all day, bro. I'm quiet about my process because people don't really want to know. People just want to know how much money you're making. So I, I used to put it all out there. This is what I'm doing with Savage. Four years ago when I was 21, this is what I'm doing. Right. This is how I'm doing it. Man, no one, nobody cares for a car. No one gives a fuck, man. Yeah. No one gives a fuck about your process. How much money are you making, Pat? Mm -hmm. When are your clothes going to get into stores? When it, You don't even know what I'm up to. You don't know. I was up till three. Uh, I'm up at six. I'm, you know what I mean? I'm doing all these things, but everyone always wants to know the end result. And that's when... The kind of no one, nobody cares, work harder. My pops used to tell me that. That's where it came from. Okay, I was wondering where that came from. It came from my pops. Yeah, and I used to tell him and all these crazy things like, oh, well, poor me. It's this, it's that. Mm -hmm. Bro, nobody cares. Just work harder. Mm. When I worked at the screw factory, no one cared where I worked. They cared what I was about to do. Right. Where are you going to go, Pat? What are you up to? What's your next move? No one really cares about what you're going through. No one cares about the struggle. No one cares. They just care about the end result. And when you meet someone like you and you, I'm obsessed with the process. Like, that's what I'm talking about when we were chatting, like, uh, early before the, mic or the, the camera went on. When I see an example, Mark Zuckerberg, Nipsey Hussle, um, Elon Musk, guys I really look up to, Einstein. Mm -hmm. I'm a dumb meathead jock, right, who idolizes Nikola Tesla and Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the amount of struggle they went through. And when I look at someone like that, I just want to know, essentially, how can I even, how is that attainable? How is that level of, of credibility and respect from everybody, how is that attainable? How did he get that? How did everyone learn to love the marathon? Mm. But he still thought it was under the radar because he's not mainstream. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So how did, how did that person get to the, the, the storefront in his neighborhood? Right. How did he get there? And that's the thing, man. It's the process. And that is, like you said, people just want the, the end result. Boom. But they don't want to go through the process. Look at the Lambo. Right. You're driving a Lambo. The first question I'm going to ask five years ago was, can I take a ride in it? Mm -hmm. How much was it? The question I ask now, how did you attain this? Right. What did you go through? What mm -hmm. hurdle did you have to jump over six out of seven days of the week? Mm -hmm. How hard was it when you weren't making any money to get up on a Wednesday and grind your ass off for 12 hours? Mm -hmm. When there's nothing coming in, but everything going out. And they see a lot of people don't want to talk about that. They don't no. want to hear that. No. They just want to hear the glitz and glamour. Because is, is being an entrepreneur cool? It's cool now. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Whether it's, it's the get rich quick scheme, whether it's, okay, well, do they want to know that I was a football major knew, or a criminology major, it might as well have been a football major, mm -hmm. who learned nothing in college and then I get hit with, what am I going to do with my LLC? What am I going to do with my over budget? What am I going to do with my books? How do I do books? What is my projections for this quarter? What do I do when I, I'm making money now? Do I do quarterly estimates? That's not cool. Right. 
that's not cool. So being an entrepreneur is just the end result. I made 150K in two and a half weeks. Right. Is that sustainable? Mm -hmm. Is that consistent? Mm -hmm. Did you do it yourself and go through the process or did you cut the corner to make the quick buck? Mm -hmm. Because being an entrepreneur is, it's a crazy bunch, bro. You really meet someone who's really in their craft, that person's crazy, lost in the sauce, in their own world, creating their own reality. Mm -hmm. Because they're literally living it. They create it. Right. Everything that's happening for me, I saw in my head. Years ago. Years ago. Right. And that's... You, something, you, something you said. I remember you saying this. You said, because I was texting you. And I said, uh, oh, when do you think you'll have time to... And you said, I'll, I'll, I'll be able to make time any day. Any day. Because you said it was because you, it's, it's important. You're passionate about it's it. important yeah. and it's passion. I'm passionate about it. I have passion on my arm and the tattoo. It, 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 it wakes you up. That's what wakes you up at 4:30 when you were up till 12, mm -hmm. and you had a long talk with your chick, and you might be a little whatever it is, mm -hmm. but you're up, right. hitting that clock, clocking in every day, right. because you don't have a time clock. Mm -hmm. Your alarm clock is your clock. That's my punch card. That's my. What did you do today, Pat? If I wake up and it's light outside, I literally have a panic attack. What did I miss out on? Who was working before me? I take it seriously because I've been screwed so many times that if I wake up and it's light outside, I freak out. And that, it's been that way for years. And see, that's the thing. You see a lot of people, one of the biggest lies I think that's told. Rise and grind. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. People will wake up, take a Snapchat, and go back to bed. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people are, li people are literally living for social media nowadays. Yes. Yes. As if, it's, if it's not on social media, it's not happening. It, exactly. And that's why I stopped. Mm -hmm. I stopped. I lived that life in Miami and Denver when I was trying to be a model, and I, and I made it. I got signed by three international agencies. I did what I said I was going to do, but I felt nothing. So why am I posting these pictures? Why am I killing myself to get the 5% body fat when I don't feel any type of way about myself? Because what I'm doing is not what I'm passionate about. It's what I thought I was passionate about. I thought I wanted to be famous because of football. Okay, I got on the Steve Harvey show. I did all these crazy things, blah, blah, blah. But I felt nothing. I felt empty. I felt no purpose. I was depressed. I couldn't get out of bed. But then people are like, oh my God, dude, you look perfect. How did you look like this? I'm like, bro, let me grab you. I'm miserable. Right. You feel me? I'm miserable right now. So some people can look like that and, and be good. Right. For me, I wasn't. And I'm straight to tell people I wasn't okay. Mm -hmm. I wasn't straight down in Miami. I went through some crazy mental times, man. Really low points. And entrepreneurs are afraid to talk about the Like Gary Vee talks about the low points. Yeah. You know how crazy I felt days? where I want to just beat my head against the wall because I have no idea what I'm going to do. And there's no one there to help you when you realize nobody cares. Right. What can I only do? I can just go to work and just put my head back down. Right. That's all. That's the only thing I could do. And it makes you question, like, what is success? For me, mm -hmm. success is being at peace, man. Nothing more, nothing less. Money to me is security. It's a piece of paper that controls our life. But it gives you security to be with your family, to do things like this. If I didn't have any money, I would have to go, I would go work on a Saturday morning, trust me. I usually do. But it's my security enough to where I can wake up, have my breakfast and coffee with my lady, come in here and, and do things like this. It's security for me. All I want is peace of mind. I gave up living in a high rise in Miami Beach in the mountains in Colorado to come back to my hometown and open a raggedy ass gym in a barn to train athletes that get no credibility, high school athletes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I came back to do. This is why I'm here. And I went through all that stuff to realize that. And see, sometimes you gotta go through all that just to realize like. You have to. Mm -hmm. I make, like anyone ask me for advice, mm -hmm. go through some stuff to find out who you are. You wanna move, move. Mm -hmm. I packed up my truck two weeks after visiting Colorado and drove out to Colorado to move there. Asked the homie, can I stay on your couch? Give me a month, I'll be out. I'll have my, I'll get a job, I'll save up money. 
16 days I was out of his, his house, off his couch. I was gone. Because I put myself in that situation. If I would have talked about it, it would have been like, yo, Stu, I'm tr I want to move to Colorado. Mm. I want to move to Colorado. I'm going to do, I'm going to do it big. I'm going to train athletes. I'm going to, I'm going to get into fitness modeling. All right. I couldn't plan that. Mm -hmm. I just know I needed a drastic change and needed to find out about myself. So I just took the chance and I jumped. I love the analogy, like a, a dog walking the leash with holding the leash. Mm. There's no one as an entrepreneur showing you how it's done. You can have a mentor, but they don't have your experiences. Mm -hmm. They don't have your past. You could look up every, you could look up Revolt TV. You could look up all these people that have great podcasts and TVs, but is it relatable to Stu? Right. Probably not. Because right. you're on your own path. You can't relate it. You can take tidbit, tidbits and pieces from other people's stuff, but like you're your own person on your own path. There's we'll no have, substitute for experience. Yeah, none. No substitute. None. No book you can read, no video you can watch. I got, I, uh, I trained it with a guy, um, Lauren Landau is my mentor. I talk about him a lot. He's Christian McCaffrey, Von Miller, Peyton Manning, um, 100 meter dash Olympians. Um, that was my mentor. And I knocked on his door for six months to get a job. Mm. You needed a college degree. I didn't have a college degree. You needed a certain amount of certifications. I didn't have those certifications. What I had was a ton of passion and raw talent, mm -hmm. just to want to help people be better. Right. I'm a people person. I want to help people because I've been broken and I still am broken. I'm not perfect, bro. I'm a, the first company I started was Savage Fitness for a reason. I'm a savage, I'm broken. I'm still trying to figure myself out, but figuring myself out by helping others is how I make peace with myself through all the struggle I've been through. But um, sh I got introduced to Lauren through Derek Wolf, who played at UC, who starts with the Broncos. He was my big brother at UC. And um, the same kind of thing, he basically gave me the opportunity to introduce Lauren to me. That's what he could do for me. The rest was up to me. It was in my court. So I was so persistent and bugged him so much. Lauren, 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 Lauren. Mm -hmm. Patty's like, Pat, you don't even know your stuff. Right. You don't even know what you're doing. But Lauren, I'm passionate. I'm willing, bro. I'll sweep the floors. Let me in the door. And he took me under his wing, bro. And he let me, he gave me that, that G pass that I needed and that start. And the best thing he ever did was bring me to my knees by critiquing me, bro. He was like, you don't know anything. Right. What do you do? You're, you're, you're a trainer? No, you're not. You're a football player who likes to work people out. Mm. And that shit, boom, 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 boom. Right. Down nine levels. How do I improve? Little did I know, I only spent eight months there, nine months there, and wanted to go model. Because I thought what Lauren was teaching me, I was like, oh, I don't want to do this, man. I'm bigger than this. Right. I'm getting good at it. I'm learning. But nah, no, I'm bigger than this. I want to go model. I want to go try something else. When in reality, I should have spent two years there on his coattail, watching every single move that he did, mm -hmm. just to learn. And that's my regret. And he called me two Sundays ago, gave me my first compliment in two and a half years. He finally approved of my training. Mm -hmm. I like what you're doing, Patrick. I respect it. Wow. That's a million dollars to me, man. Right. I'm boosted up. Yeah. I ran into the other room and, and jumped on my fiance. Like, yo, I just got a compliment from who I look up to right. and him being that hard on me and that tough love, mm -hmm. man, that's got me here. That's, that's, that's what black sheep performance is. It's legitimate training. Right. I had to learn. You can't just fake it. Right. Cause people, <laughs> you can't, it's going, it's going to reveal itself. Eventually. It will. That's why people are coming to me from other gyms in a barn. Mm -hmm. Well, not in the barn now, right. but when it's 130 degrees and there's weeds growing through the walls, because I'm giving them results and I'm a people person. Trainers go, what do you do? I'm a trainer. Well, then you're going to lose clients. I'm a teacher. I'm a people person. I'm relating to them every single day. If I'm struggling, I'm going to let them know I'm struggling and talk to them about how it is okay to not feel 100% straight up here. Right. How it's, it's not always going to be a great 100% A plus day, man. The, 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 it rains more than it, it, it rains more than the sun shines when you're really trying to be great. 
And if you can accept that as a kid, man, now you're now you're getting now you're onto something. That's right. money can't buy. You're you're building a man right. or a woman mm -hmm. that has a backbone. Right. You know, they're not gonna crumble when, when someone brings something up that's uncomfortable. And that's and that's what you need. You need more uh people that are um willing to be vulnerable, willing to really tell the truth about where they are and the journey and the process. Because if you, uh, if you make it look, like you said, all sunshine, yeah. then people get the wrong perception. And, like, oh, and when something so does quick. go wrong, they have no idea how to react. Exactly. Exactly. They have no idea what to do. No. Because they're like, this is not part of it. No. Right? This, this is not right. I was supposed to be making six figures by now. Exactly. I was supposed to be training pro athletes. Exactly. I was supposed to be videotaping the best rapper in the world. Mm. But you got to start with some Patrick Coins. <laughs> you got to start, you, you got to start with, you got to start with dudes who work out of a barn and on a field. You know what I mean? And the best advice Lauren Landau gave me was like, don't ever think you're shit. Mm. Don't ever think you arrived. Show up every day to work with your lunch pail in your hard hat, man, and go to work. You, right when you think you're, you're something, you're nothing. You lost. You just lost. You just lost. And I hear some of my athletes, you, yesterday, mm -hmm. you, there's some kids acting like da 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 da. Right. You're 15 years old, bro. Right. I don't know why you're thinking like this. Mm -hmm. Go back to work. Enjoy this process. Put your head down and go through a wall. You know, and see the, the one of the main words that um, that I see when it comes to being a black sheep yeah. right, is sacrifice. Yes, yes. And that's where a lot of kids uh, struggle with, yeah. with all the distractions and all of that. Fortnite. Fortnite. Man. Oh my goodness. So many of my athletes play Fortnite, but uh, the the black sheep mentality, man, it isn't. And people have always asked me, why do you start companies with such harsh words? Mm -hmm. It's not harsh. That's my reality. I'm callous, man. I've been through some stuff. Right. I've seen the other side, and it's not always grass. Mm -hmm. It's gravel. It's mud. It's, it's mountains, you know? And, and it's not always pretty. Right. And so I don't want to build a company that's only beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm focused on the guy to the left who's hitting his head against the wall because he doesn't know and understand what's going on in life, but he has potential. Right. I don't want the kid who is glitz, glamour, has it all together. You don't need me. You don't need me. I want people who need me. Mm -hmm. And the black sheep is, I, I went through so much stuff as a kid and, and got so much grief and, and bullying and misunderstanding, even though I was a big kid, even though I had the offers, I was so misunderstood because I took myself seriously. Now, was I arrogant at times? That's taught me, yes, yeah, I was. That's brought me back down now. I'm humble now, I have no ego. But I was so misunderstood because I wanted to be great. And that's the same thing now. Why is Pat moving to Colorado? Why are you starting a company at 21? You don't know what you're doing, dude. Get your degree. You're an idiot. You're dyslexic. You don't, you, you know, you were in the trailer behind the school. You weren't even in the school. All these things it brought me to that point to where, no, I, I'm accepting this. I'm accepting this black sheep in me. I am different. Not because I'm better than you. Because I will outwork you. The Will Smith put me out of trouble next to you, bro. I promise you, I promise you, you're going to quit before me. And that's my mentality. I'm not the smartest dude in the room. I'm not. But I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to work. Mm. That's my mentality. Right. I didn't have the four-year degree. I didn't have, you know, the great grades in high school. I don't have the great report. I didn't have the best run-ins with, with legal people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But accepting that about yourself that i am a black sheep and i am cool with this stuff i have been through some things but i still had a lot of value to give the world right a lot of value even if it's just in cincinnati ohio and no one ever knows about me i'm cool with that i'm cool with that but those kids and those athletes and those people that i touched that means the world to them that's all i need that's why i moved from miami to here that's why i stopped modeling to train in a barn because it's about how i impact them not about how many people I impact. Right. You know? Yeah. And see, and that's, and one of the things that I tell, that I've told one of my athletes is hard work is the great equalizer. Mm. 
You know what I mean? You may not have the, 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 the background. You may not have this or that. But the great equalizer is hard work. Straight up. You know what I mean? And so you, the equalizer movie coming out and all of that. But the, the real equalizer is hard work. It is. And it's so hard to accept. Mm. Okay, you want to, you, you, you get an athlete as a freshman. Mm-hmm. Stu, I want to go to Duke. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll take that kid. Oh, really? Duke. Here's what we got to do. Right. A through Z. Four years of work. No partying. No this, no that. Right. If you can man up and accept that outline to your work, you're going to make it. Right. If you can't, you're going to just talk about it. Mm-hmm. Accepting the amount of work that it takes to be done to start a successful company, to lose the weight, to gain the weight. To do these things, to get the job, to take the interview, to talk to the dude or girl that you haven't been wanting to talk to. Right. That's mm. what it takes. In my eyes. Okay, so I, I had, I was really um, impressed with everything, you know, less than 24 hours ago when I was at your training mm-hmm. session. Because um, once, like, you, you were demanding, yeah. um, but you were also really, really into the details. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what do you, what is what's what's the importance of details when it comes to not just being an athlete, an entrepreneur, whatever, the small things. If you ignore the small things, the big things are gonna outweigh the small things. You're gonna fail like that. The small things make champions. Mm. Are you willing to sweep the floor the right way? Or are you gonna sweep it as fast as you can and get it done? Mm. I could give a kid a tidbit or a, a man. I train some dudes that are my age, right. professional athletes and older. I can give them a large chunk of information, but like I say, it's not, I could give someone my program and they could train an athlete and they'll get results because the program's good, but it's how you teach it. Those little tiny things, what I'm looking for, because I care. I care about the kid. Not to name a kid, but there was a kid there yesterday you saw that was very emotional. He was having a rough day. Mm. And I could tell that. And I was on his ass. I wanted to see him break. Because after he breaks, then I'm going to put my arm around him and go, dog, you're, you're okay. You see what happened? You broke, you're still here. You're good. And looking a kid in the eye and like, I can give all the small things in the world, but if he knows I don't care, he's never going to respond well to my, my calloused ways. I'm a hard ass, man. They know I love him, but they know it's going to be a ton of tough love. Because that's what I needed. And I might be right, I might be wrong. I'm not saying my way is right. It works for me and my kids. Right. It works for me and my athletes. If someone else might have tried to do it, they might, it might not work. Maybe it does. Mm-hmm. But um, the little tiny small things, and I think the small thing isn't only training. I think the small thing is caring. Mm-hmm. I think the small thing is literally re- relatability between me and you. Mm-hmm. We're two different cats. Right. I don't know you from Tom, right? Mm-hmm. But in these past 24 hours, we've been talking. And you can tell I care. I right. can tell you care. Right. So there's the little thing that I need. We bridge that gap. Boom, now I'm here 24 hours later. So if I can show a kid or a client or, you know, one of the five companies I start before I die from now, you know, mm-hmm. if I can show people that I care and I'm a people person, my business is going to last because it's truth and it's organic versus built on a facade right. on the large things, built on Instagram marketing right. and clickbait and all right. this stuff those yeah. are huge things yeah. you could maybe make some money but it's not consistent right. there's no structure behind it mm. there's no care right. so i think the little thing that i do the best isn't drilling isn't i'm not i'm a better people person and carer than i am a speed coach mm. and i think that gets kids to come back and listen to me versus just go because their parents want them to mm. Because that eventually will fail you. It will fail you. If you're going just for your parents. 100%. Going just for acceptance. Yeah. It's going to eventually. That's how people burn out. Burn out. Straight up. Because they're not doing it. I burned out of modeling in four months because I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Not because you didn't succeed. Not because I didn't succeed. I got the agencies I wanted. I'm in Nashville, Chicago, and Miami. Mm-hmm. I did that. But it didn't give me any worth at all. Bro, like really, it, it, I didn't feel anything. And that, that, that was the hardest thing for me to accept, wow. was the not feeling anything. And oh my God, I just wasted two years. Oh wait, and telling yourself catching, I didn't waste it. 
if it wasn't for those experiences, mm -hmm. I would not be here. Right. Literally. It's the journey. You can't skip any part of the process, man. You know, like under pressure, right? A diamond has to go under extreme heat, extreme pressure, has to be cut. So that whole process, right? But then once it goes through that whole process, it can't be broken. No. And I remember you, before the, the camera came on, you were telling me a lot of people like short-term success versus long-term success. Short-term, okay, you may get the money, you may get the, but 10 years from now, you're going to be broken. You're going to be broke. Even if it's not broke, you're broken. Mm. I know a lot of wealthy people in my circle that aren't happy. Mm. And I think it's, I'm not shoving people down to get inheritance or help from their, their parents or, or things like that at all. I'm really not. But a person who knows the struggle mm -hmm. and builds, builds it from the mud, from the mud, mm -hmm. that person is unbreakable. You can't break them. How can you walk up to them? You could be the richest person in the world. You're, you can't take anything from me because right. you didn't give me help. Mm -hmm. You can give me advice and I will listen. I will listen to anybody who has anything to say about my business. Right. I used to get really defensive. Mm -hmm. What are you saying about my business? Now it's, I want to hear more info. You right. could be not know anything about training, but I want to know what you think about my training. Mm -hmm. I want to know what you think about my business. Mm -hmm. How can I make it better from your viewpoint? Because if it's from your viewpoint, it could be from a million viewpoints. Right. That's all I want to know. I'm just, right. I'm hungry for knowledge, man. I'm hungry for, for input on what I'm doing. Because yeah. I don't put myself out there as much as I used to on social media. I keep my moves to myself. I work in silence more than I do. I'm so busy now that I don't even post a lot. I, I don't. Right. You know? And see, that... that 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 hunger for knowledge that hunger to improve is what people there's a word starts with an o and a lot of people use it for a negative effect when really it's a word that all of the greats in my opinion can relate to this word and that's obsessed oh i like it obsessed and you know and that's that's that hunger that's that you know, and other people are going to look at you crazy. Absolutely. They're going to look at you crazy. Absolutely. You There's something I mean? wrong with people who are that obsessed. Like I said, when you're successful, you see an entrepreneur, that person's crazy. Mm. That person's crazy. Kobe Bryant. Mm. One of my favorite, um, my best friend, Javon Harrison, who I started Savage with. We always used to talk about this. Kobe Bryant, every morning when he wakes up, I'm big on a morning ritual. It doesn't always go well, mm -hmm. but I try every single morning to do the same thing. Mm. He had a shark tank with no shark in it at the foot of his bed. He was the shark. He had a shark tank with no shark in it at the end of his bed. And thinking about that, right. thinking about that mindset he's putting himself in every single morning. He's the shark, dog. He is, there's nothing, nothing above him. Right. King of the water, king of his house, king, king of his life, king of his decisions. Mm. He's hunting, not being hunted. Right. He wakes up and goes. Mm. Like as human beings, we're hunters and gatherers. We literally used to have to wake up and go get our food. Why don't you wake up and go get what you want to do? Right. Mm. And that's that, that's that mama mentality, man. Yeah. That's that I, mama mentality. But you feel it. Like who's crazy enough to put an empty shark tank at their bed? Kobe. Mm. He's the, arguably the goat, right? Yeah. The goat. So... There's something to it. All the yeah. greats have something in common, and it's obsession. Yeah. But you also have to be realized you're going to be looked at as an outcast, as a black sheep. Yeah. Why are you going to the gym at four? Why aren't you coming out like last night? People ask me, why aren't you going to come out? You always stay in. Why? Because I want to be on point for this interview. I want to wake up and feel good. Right. I don't want a subpar interview. I want a great interview. I want to be the best interview you ever had because this is my chance. Wow. That's just, that's how, that's, if I have a chance to do something, I might not be the best, but I'm going to come correct. Right. I'm going to come ready and give you what I have, 100%. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing with my business, my fiance, my parents, my boys. I might not always do it right, right. but I'm going to give you 100% of me. I'm going to give you authenticity, transparency. That's, that's all I have in this world. Right. If I break that word with you, if I come in hungover, 
What are you going to think about me? What are you going to think about my business? If I'm slurring my words and I'm a little tired and I smell like alcohol. When in college, I did that. I did that shit. I was the football player who came and hung over because I thought I could get by on my talent. All of a sudden, I failed at the dream I worked for for 22 years. I failed. I'm cool to say that. I'm cool to look at the camera and say I literally failed at what I worked hardest at. But in reality, retrospective, did I really work that hard? No. I was blessed with God-given talent. I really was. I worked my ass off, but compared to what I know hard work now, nothing. No sacrifice on my end. I was going out three to five nights a week. And even if I wasn't, was I studying film if I was sitting on my ass at home? No. I wasn't doing the things I needed to. So that's why I am the way I am now. I'm two different people. Right. Pat Coyne in college and Patrick Coyne now. Mm-hmm. Two different guys. If I would like to have a beer with myself in college and go back and be like, man, listen, you are going to mess this up. Your life is going to change as you know it. You're going to get put on your ass and no one's going to care about you. That was my reality. Mm. When football ended, no one came to me. No one came in, oh, dude, you okay? You all right, Pat? Right. No, no one was there. You know what I mean? And once I accepted that, mm. oh, man, I was straight. Right. I was a different dude. I went through 60 days of depression, 60 days of the dark, 60 days of self-questioning, 60 days of, man, some pretty dark thoughts, right? And everyone's been there, and people are afraid to admit that. I'm not. Right. I was low, man. I had nothing. I had no identity. I had no purpose. I had no passion. I had no experience in life other than this damn, this shape, this weird shaped ball. I had nothing. Right. And I literally had to Google what makes people happy. Wow. I literally Googled what makes people happy. How do people live successful lives? I had no knowledge. I had nothing. And it was going to the Buddhists and the monks, doing what you love, doing, find what you love and do it. And if you want to do a business and if you want to make monetary gain and money, mm-hmm. if you want to go into nature and live your life in love, I tell people I could go that way. I could be a monk as much as I could be a trainer. Mm-hmm. It's just where I put my energy. Right. So later in life, I might want to go out into the woods and find complete solitude and peace with myself because it's really hard to be completely peaceful when you're running a business. But I had to look up what makes them happy, doing what they love. Right. And then, like I said, if you want to make it monetary, do what you love and solve a problem. Mm. Now there's your business. Right. Don't make it more complicated than that. How can your talent solve a solution? Or create a solution, rather. That's your business. People can make fun of what I'm doing. I found a problem. I have a solution. And it's working. It's why my business is gaining traction. It's why it's organic. Mm -hmm. The problem's not going anywhere. And if I can figure out how to make that solution better and better and better, my business gets better and better and better. I get better and better and better. The athletes get better and better and better. The families get better and better and better. And that's what I'm, that, that onion effect, those multiple, multiple, multiple layers of what I'm doing versus just making it about me. Right. Like it was when I was doing my, my past businesses and experiences. Football modeling, Savage. It wasn't about them. It was about what I wanted. Mm. I was very selfish and egotistical when that happened. Right. And now I'm trying not to be, and we'll see where it goes. And see, there's levels to everything, mm-hmm. right? That's what you were saying. There's levels to everything because what made you, you said you had natural talent. Yeah. But that natural talent in high school, that doesn't mean it's going to transfer to college. Absolutely not. And in college, it's not going to transfer to the pros, no. right? And even in the pros, you got, you got players who are um, in the pros, then you got all stars. Yeah. Then you got Hall of Famers. Yep. So there's levels to everything, man. And so what is your opinion on good versus great? What's the difference between a good athlete and a great athlete? What they're willing to do. Mm. I was a good athlete. I could have been great. I wasn't great because of what I wasn't doing. Was my talent great? Yes. But what I was doing off the field and everything else was not great. So I was only good. The separation between good and great is, is minute, is minuscule, is, is, is a hair thin. It's that fine line. Yeah. Going out for a drink, staying your ass in. Mm-hmm. Watching film, not watching film. And people, I'm not saying there's a right and a wrong way to do it. Right. But if you look at the greats in any field, I don't care if you're talking about Einstein 
I don't care if you're talking about people hate him, Donald Trump. I don't care if you're talking about any successful person, businessman, entity, anything. They have the same characteristics. They're willing to do what others aren't, when others won't. Always. Every day, seven days a week, that person is built different. Bred different. And truly that mentality of, of eating with the wolves and really going into work every day and willing to do the crazy stuff that people aren't willing to do, that's good versus great. Mm. So it's in the decision. It's in your decision. Your you, daily decision. Daily, no, minute, hourly, mm. second decision. How you think about yourself, what you're telling yourself, your positive self-talk, are you even manifesting? Do you even know what manifestation is? The greatest power in the world. Seeing something before it happens and painting it in your head and then laying out the work that it needs to get there. I'm a manifester every second. I manifested this last night. I thought about it. I thought about how it was going to go. I thought about how we're going to mesh. And it went uh, pretty similar to this. And that's, I always have to think about it something because I didn't used to do that. I was so stuck in the moment that I'd get blindsided by things when I could have thought about that and I could have prepared for it mentally mm. versus just waking up and throwing haymakers left and right. right. <laughs> it doesn't work. I think Eric Thomas, Eric Thomas, the Love Eric Thomas. Speaker, he's the, he's the goat. Uh, he was talking about how there's no more time for being honor Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Mm -hmm. Where, oh, I'll be back and just shoot everything up. Yeah. And then, but you, you wasting bullets, right? You, you shooting everything up. He said he's on his Jason Bourne. Yes. Where, you know, boom, boom, one shot, bang, put it back, and then done. I, I relate that to wasting energy. Mm. I relate that to, like, say you have 100 shots a day in your body. Right. You have 100 good shots. You have 100 good responding. How you respond to everything is, is, is how your life's going to go, right? right? And if I use up all my positive responses that I've built up for myself through... Years and years when it used to be, I used to have like a hundred or, or 15 shots in me a day. Before, if something went wrong, it was over. I was freaking out. I was blah, blah, blah. By, excuse me, by saving those shots, by not reacting and, and spraying everywhere versus being composed and being introspective and thinking about it. How can I do this differently? That's the, the kicker. If I can save my energy and I can respond well at 8.30 at night and not respond badly to a call when I'm tired as heck, that's a winning, that's a winning formula for me because I used to not be able to do that. And I still struggle with it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I give so much so early in the day that something later really takes away from me, really gets me down that one-lane road versus a five-lane highway to where I'm so one-track minded, now that's the only thing I'm thinking about. And usually it's negative when you go down that one-track road and you get stuck on that thought. And that thought builds into 15 thoughts and then all of a sudden you're having a shitty day. Mm -hmm. And if you can hold those shots and be calm, collected, cool, you know, always just Mac Daddy, like I, I use the James Brown, paid the cost to be a boss. The, 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 real, the real boss move is a suit and tie, straight face. Nothing too high, nothing too low. Nothing can affect me. Now, I'm working towards that. I'm a million miles away from that. But that's that image I hold in my head, that nothing affects you, that calmness, that peace, that, that's success to me. Right. But success, that doesn't have to be for everybody, mm -hmm. for me personally. It's true peace of mind. Right. And being able to take those 100 shots a day and hold them back and put them to, to a positive effect versus a negative effect. Mm. So, so what's, what's, what's next, right? What's next? Like five to 10 years from now, what would be your perfect like situation? What would be your like, this is it. This is definitely. I mean, there could be a million because a million different things could happen between now and five minutes from now. But mm, as right. of right now at this moment, <laughs> at <yeah>. this. <laughs> um, I want to be the best speed and movement coach in the state of Ohio. And I want to move from that. And not, no egotistical, from legitimate knowledge, from legitimate progress. That's my goal. Right. Not for credibility, but for the impact I can have. Right. Now, there's things that I can't talk about because I'm in some contractual things. There's something in the works for Black Sheep. Black Sheep will not be in a barn or a field. It's moving to something greater.
and it's it's something that is for the athletes is um is going to be the biggest thing in my life mm. other than my family and fiance you know what i mean it'll be the biggest thing in my life right. and i'm really excited because it's four years of, of struggle of not having a savings account of sharing meals with the homies when you don't have food right it, it, my time is now and i'm very happy for it and i'm i'm ready i wish i could give more info but but i can tell man great things are gonna come all right so last question one of my favorite questions i ask people okay when it's all said and done right you've done all you can do right you've achieved all that you want to achieve everything what do you want people to say patrick corn was he tried he cared and he gave absolutely everything every single day with no ego it wasn't about him it was about everybody else because i made the first half of my life about me that ship has sailed my friend it's about the process the struggle and how many lives i can impact that dude changed lives how about that mm. that dude changed lives he left an impact that's all i want mm. Amazing, man. Another great episode with Patrick Coyne, man. Make sure you guys check out all of it that he has going on. Go follow him, follow his journey, because there's a lot of great things coming. Follow us as well on social media under Pressure TV. A lot of great things coming, more interviews coming. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. And another great episode, man, with Patrick Coyne. I appreciate My you. My dude, man. thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. From a place where the pain gon' show From the black, watch your rose gon' grow Put the show on the road People died so I'm kicking down the door Oh no, I never sell my soul Gotta stick to the cold To the top, I ain't never coming down Through the hurt, man, I still keep a smile I'ma be here for a while Want the people around the world to hear the sound Greatness, I ain't never stopping now I ain't never stopping now From a place where the pain gon' show From the black, watch your rose gon' grow Put the show on